The safe house where Ayman al-Zawahiri hid in Kabul now bears the scars of two Hellfire missiles sent to kill him. In this case, we use an unmanned aerial vehicle with, uh, with missiles, obviously, uh, and two of those missiles were fired at Mr. Uh, Zawahiri while he was outside on that third floor uh, uh, balcony. 71-year-old al-Zawahiri was Osama bin Laden's number two, a key planner for the 9-11 attacks on the World Trade Center. After bin Laden's death, he became the wanted leader of a weakened al-Qaeda. The Taliban has condemned the drone strike on its soil. But the U.S. says allowing al-Zawahiri to hide in Afghanistan violated an agreement made prior to the U.S. withdrawal. We are communicating directly with the Taliban about their obligations not to allow al-Qaeda uh, to use Afghanistan as a basis for plotting. Canadian Maureen Baznicki, whose husband Ken was among those killed on 9-11, has mixed feelings about the implication of al-Zawahiri's death. Happy that one evil man has been eliminated from our lives. I'm anxious because even though one kingpin has been murdered, I'm sure that there's many out there wanting to replace him. Al-Zawahiri's death is likely to be damaging to al-Qaeda, but experts say it won't cause any lasting harm to the groups it has inspired, like ISIS and al-Shabaab. There are several affiliated groups that could continue to, to advance bin Laden's original vision for what he wanted this al-Qaeda enterprise to do, and these groups have remained the more viable parts of that enterprise even in the past decade plus. Al-Qaeda had been trying to build its strength after years of decline. There is no word on a successor. Carolyn Dunn, CBC News, Calgary.